He How do you get him out if he's saying I won't drop? You know, he doesn't. He's going to come to the conclusion that this is just not a good idea, and he's going to resist it, and he's going to listen to his family. He's already going. It's all the same. We blame the staff, then we blame the media, then it's the elites in a Democratic Party. Hi, do I look elite? What the hell's elite about growing up in rural South Louisiana and going to LSU? And this is all across the country. And I understand it's all predictable. And he's got to go through this and he'll get there sooner as opposed to later. Sooner opposed to later. Where's your confidence come from? I, you know, Chris, I can't. I don't predict things. I'm just telling you, it's inevitable. He will come to the conclusion. People will get the message to him. He will understand. His family will understand. They'll pray on it, and they'll make the right decision. I, I, I don't have any doubt about it, but while we dilly-dallying around here, somebody's got to think of where we go from here. He'll get there sooner as opposed to later. That's old serpent head himself, Democrat strategist James Carville, saying it's inevitable. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when Biden is going to end this catastrophic campaign. And now we're getting reports that Democrats are literally crying. We're going to see the latest on the death watch of the crumbling Biden campaign and why their only other option is actually infinitely worse. You're not going to want to miss this. Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor here to help you stay sane in these insane times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, does your financial advisor have your values in mind when it comes to investing in financial planning? Like when you invest in the stock market, do you know exactly which companies you're investing in? I mean, obviously, given the rise of Woke Inc., I bet you can think of a whole host of companies you don't want to give a dime to because of what they believe in and how they're contributing to the moral decline of America. And they're certainly not going to do that with your hard-earned dollars. Thankfully, my friends over at Sovereign Financial are committed to helping all of their clients be good stewards by investing your money only in companies you can be proud to own. Click on that link below and you'll quickly find they never invest in companies that support or profit from abortion, pornography, addictive lifestyles, or abuses of any kind. They only invest with companies contributing to positive change in America. This is huge, gang. These fiduciary financial planners always put your interests First, they help their clients be good stewards through tax strategy and planning, retirement planning, and they help you create a legacy for the next generation of Americans. The Patriots at Sovereign Financial are the real deal. So what are you waiting for? Now's the time to get your finances secured and working for you and for the good of our nation. Click on that link below right now to chat with a financial advisor and a true patriot today. As Biden digs in his heels, or better, as Jill digs in hers, more and more Democrat operatives and media pundits are predicting that Biden's days are indeed numbered. In fact, there are reports that more and more Democrats are literally in tears. They are crying. Axios is reporting that a group of swing district Democrats in the House held a meeting yesterday where there were actual tears shed among the attendees, and it's not for Biden. That's what's so hilarious here. It's not, the tears aren't for Biden. They're shedding tears over their own prospects for their own survival. Right now, as we speak, Democrats are projected to lose over 20 seats in the House. That's what Democrat insiders themselves are saying. Democrats are saying this. This is why they're, this is why they're so panicked. They're not just about to lose the White House they're about to lose the Senate and the Republicans are about to pick up seats in the House. And by the way, that's the pattern of virtually every single election historically. I think there was only a single election in our history where the party that won the White House didn't also pick up seats in the Senate and the House. It would be virtually impossible for Trump to win and Republicans lose the House. But obviously a pickup of 20 seats would be amazing, hence the tears. Take a look at this 
panic from Politico. Remember, Politico is basically the mouthpiece for the DNC. New York is now officially a swing state. This coming from Politico, okay? New York, one of the single most reliably blue states in the nation, is now in danger of going red. Now, we've talked about this in a number of other videos. All the polls show that Trump is literally nipping at the heels of Biden in New York. Biden won that state by nearly 25 points in 2020. His lead has dwindled to single digits as we speak. This is why Democrat Senator Michael Bennett from Colorado, he's just coming out. He's just saying the quiet part out loud. Trump is poised to crush Biden in a total electoral landslide at this point. I mean, there's just no way of sugarcoating this. If Biden is the nominee, they're going to lose in a landslide. And again, that landslide doesn't just adversely affect Biden. This is where the tears are coming in. It's a down ticket disaster that's in the making right now. The landslide looks like it's going to be across the board, not just in the White House. And again, more and more are admitting that because of this, Biden's days are numbered. You may have seen this, but ABC News anchor Georgie Stephanopoulos was caught walking down a Manhattan street the other day. And he was asked by a passerby what he thought about Biden after the interview. Hey, Susan. Hey, how you doing? Uh, what do you think? Do you think Biden should step down? You yeah. talk to him more than anybody else have lately. And you could be honest. Four more years. You don't think he can serve four more years? All right. That's an answer. So there you have it. Georgie Stephanopoulos, the very person who conducted that disastrous interview with Biden that was supposed to assuage nervous Democrats. He does not think Biden's got it in him to serve another four years. Now, that interaction was so embarrassing to the Biden administration that ABC News had to issue a bit of a retraction. The spokesperson said that Steffi was expressing his own viewpoint and it was not the position of ABC News. Obviously, they were rather embarrassed by the rather blatant admission, again, by the very person who conducted that disastrous interview. It doesn't get worse than that. But the pylon is just getting worse and worse. Getting... Now, George Clooney, the rabid leftist Democrat donor, is the latest the Hollywood ilk calling on Biden to drop. A dropout. He joins the hysterics coming from author Stephen King and meathead himself, Rob Reiner, who are all calling on Biden to step aside for the good of the country, of course, the very country they so virulently despise. But there is a fundamental problem that the Democrats are facing with these calls for Biden to drop out. Ironically, Biden is the best they've got. No one else even comes close to competing as well uh, against Trump as Biden does, especially Kamala. You won't believe who's actually admitting that Kamala has no chance. This is going to blow you away. But first, gang, you've got to click on that link below and RSVP for our special online call to arms event to ensure Trump's victory in November. This is no time to get complacent. We need an all-hands-on-deck approach to winning in November, and that's exactly what this Call to Arms event is all about. It's a completely free online event. It'll be on Wednesday, July 17th, and you will not want to miss it. Just click on that link below to register. We've already had over 900 of your fellow Patriots RSVP, and you can join them by clicking on that link below right now. And if you do that now, I'm going to give you our Courageous Conservatives book bundle. That's three of my top selling books, absolutely free. But that's a limited time offer, so don't wait. Click on that link below and let's together learn what each and every one of us can do to ensure Trump's victory in November. Here's the fundamental problem that the Democrats have with switching Joe out this late in the game. They literally have no one else. They got they got no bench. They literally have no one else who could beat Trump. According to the latest Emerson polling, Every single Biden replacement actually does worse against Trump. Every single one. And this is largely because they lose the incumbent advantage, right? Every single one who's just, I mean, they just, I'm, that includes Michelle. Gang, it includes freaking Al Gore. They stuck Al Gore in there. I mean, if that doesn't tell you the sad state of the Democratic Party today, I don't know what does. But when all is said and done, the only the only logistically and legally viable option is Kamala. And she, of course, is a polling disaster. Even CNN, of all places, is admitting this 
They're highlighting what a total disaster she would be. Check out what they said last night at Trump's rally in Florida. What happens if Kamala Harris is at the top of the ticket? I want to read to you exactly what he said because he just said it moments ago, so we haven't been able to cut that sound yet. But he says, whatever else can be said about crooked Joe Biden, you have to give him credit for one brilliant decision. Picking Kamala Harris as his vice president was the greatest insurance policy of all time. If Joe had picked someone even halfway competent, they would have bounced him from his office years ago. Can you believe she she read that out loud? <laughs> What the heck is happening over at CNN? I mean, seriously, pigs are flying all over the place. Can you believe she read that out loud? Bumble and Biden's most genius move was to appoint Kamala Harris as vice president because that was, she was his greatest insurance policy. Had he appointed anyone else, they would have gotten rid of him years ago. CNN read that out loud. I mean, this is beyond anything I could have ever imagined just months ago. So the Democrats can cry all they want. As things stand, their only options are bad and worse. Which means it looks like the Democrat tears have only just begun.